All right. All right, we are live. Let's take a look here what we got going on. Give everybody a second to pull in as I'm sure everybody's dying to see what's going on in the southeast right now. Thankfully, not too much. We don't need any more catastrophes in this country right now. We'll just give anybody who wants to hop on a second and we'll go ahead and get started here. Make sure we got all things ready to go. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. I'll be monitoring them on my phone. I'll do that that way. That'll be easier. Oh, James is already ready to go. There we have it. <laughs> I know. The Towering Inferno is cool. You guys don't have any cool nicknames. All right, we'll just go ahead and get started here. Um, this will be available later to watch if you miss out on anything. So thankfully, we don't have too much to talk about right now, but we are going to discuss a few other things that happened over the last month um, and look maybe into the future a little bit. Uh, all right. Hey, everybody. Max Olson here with Adjuster TV. We're going to be doing an analysis of the severe weather event in the southeast right now. Uh, we currently have a few severe thunderstorms in northern Alabama, eastern Mississippi, uh, moving into southern Tennessee. Thankfully, we have not had much in the way of, uh, you know, very dangerous or damaging weather today. Uh, let's actually go first before we look at these storms that are ongoing right now. We'll take a look at the storm reports from today um, because there really haven't been too many. Here's the outlook as of 1.58 p.m., so the most recent outlook. And we can see here, uh, slight risk encompasses a large portion of the southeastern states. That's the yellow. The orange is the enhanced risk. And as you can see, that's northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, into eastern Tennessee, which is coinciding with where we have our storms right now. And they're going to be moving east, northeast throughout the remainder of the evening with the potential for damaging winds and potentially a few tornadoes. But let's go ahead and look at what we've had reported so far today. Not much, just a few severe wind reports it looks like, which is good. We've had a lot of damaging severe weather over the past few weeks, so we do not need any more. Let's see, we've got, we've got you know, all just wind reports, and um, I would imagine they're nothing too catastrophic. Uh, some trees down in northern Tennessee, northern Alabama, trees down along power lines. Let's see, roof blown off a storage building. And that's about the extent of the damage that we're getting from these. So probably, you know, 60, 75 mile per hour winds with these storms, which is to be expected. No tornado reports so far. That is a good thing. Let's go ahead and take a look at the storms that we have ongoing right now. Let's start with this one that's in Mississippi and then we'll work our way up. What we've been looking for today are um, if any isolated storms are able to kind of mature out ahead of the cold front, which is sweeping through. We have snow in the Midwest. In fact, it's even snowing outside here in central Oklahoma. And you can see we have all these little we have all these little spuds and they're just not doing a whole lot. This one's severe and I'm not even sure I would call that totally severe. Let's see what it's worn for. Warning states, mm, 60 mile per hour winds and penny size hail. So yeah, maybe some damaging winds with that. Um, they just haven't really been able to take off. The reasoning for that is because of a, a little bit of a lack of instability. Instability is the juice in the atmosphere that allows storms to really mature. And that's caused by basically the sun heating up the uh, warm, moist air coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. It heats it up. It's kind of like heating up a pot of water and it starts to boil, 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 pops through. Well, if it doesn't quite pop through, then you don't have those extremely intense updrafts that create the severe weather or the severe thunderstorms rather that would create uh, tornadoes or extremely damaging winds. You can see here actually not not 
terribly bad. It's a little better than I anticipated. This is a map that measures instability uh, with a product called CAPE, Convective Available Potential Energy, C-A-P-E, CAPE. Um, and usually you want uh, over 15,000 joules per kilogram, which is, uh, you can see, I don't know if you guys can see that actually right here, but it's delineated 15, 1,000, 500, 2,000. So we've got a pretty wide swath of uh, 1,500. So perhaps maybe it's something like lapse rates or something. We won't go into technically about what might be going on. But all we know right now is that the storms aren't really popping um, in the open warm sector here in southern central Mississippi, southern central Alabama. Um, up closer to the front here, see how you can kind of see um, here, let's let's see if we can get a better map app, actually. Okay, so see these greens down in here? That's the that's the warm, moist air, and then the blues and whites up here um, are the colder airs. So this right here, um, this delineation of the two between the greens and then these these blues and these whites, this is the front. This is the cold front, and along the cold front, you have more lift. So storms are more likely to be there, but they're less likely to be um, prolific tornado producers usually because they're so close to that cold air that they can get undercut. And these storms up here, you can see they're a lot bigger. They're a lot more vigorous looking, and that's because they're reinforced by that cold front. Um, let's go ahead and animate this. That doesn't mean that they can't produce tornadoes, though. They absolutely can. Um, just if we were looking at... Um, for instance, something like the quad state storm that happened a few weeks ago, that happened way, way out ahead of where the cold front is. Um, out in that open, warm air, nothing to impede it, and it was just able to go, go, go. And we were concerned that there might be some storms, obviously not quite to that capacity, but similarly out in the open, warm sector, able to thrive off that, but that is yet to happen today. And these storms really even along the cold front aren't even too impressive. Let's look at velocities. So what you're looking at right now, it's called reflectivity. It's the radar bouncing beams uh, and it's bouncing off precipitation and the denser the precipitation, the darker the colors. Now let's go to velocity, which measures which way the wind is going. Is it going towards the radar or away from the radar? <coughs> you have to excuse me. I do have COVID right now, so I do have to cough and take a sip of water every now and then um and let's let's maybe look at base velocity and we're looking in the portion of the storm if we correlate that actually we can do two panels that'll make it a little easier to diagram I'm going to put the base reflectivity on that side and the base velocity on this side. So you can see here, there's the storm. Here is our um, area that we would be looking for any potential circulation. And there is a little bit of circulation. It's just not very tight. It's been pretty broad. You can see it's kind of elongated there. So I wouldn't say there's a very large uh, tornado threat with this in the near term. In fact, none of these storms really look overly impressive which is a really good thing because man we've already had so much happen that we don't need any more these storms down here while small they do have these little these little velocity couplets so they are rotating that's just characterized by that primed environment if one of these were to really explode it would definitely have tornado potential later on and the thing with the southeast is they can go into the night and uh, easily produce tornadoes uh, as it gets later on doesn't have to be just a daytime thing. All right, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and take a look over here at the National Weather Service, the wide map here, and see what else we got going on. There's a ton, a ton of tornado watches, all the way still extending from near Shreveport down here, all the way up through Tennessee, even into southern Kentucky. And then up here, these purples and pinks are for winter storms. The purples are winter storm advisories, uh, which is one criteria below a warning. And then these pinks here from eastern Nebraska, northern Missouri, southern, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> southern Iowa into northern Illinois. These are all winter storm warnings. Let's go ahead and take a look here at Iowa, south of Des Moines here. Let's see what type of totals they're expecting go ahead and click here on Des Moines see what their forecast is three degrees Ooh, that looks like fun it's gonna be three degrees here tonight I think maybe maybe a little warmer so it looks like they're looks like they're only looking at a few inches 
Maybe they issued the warning because of the uh, wind. Let's go ahead and see what the Illinois area is getting. Chicago. It's not going to be at times. Let's see if we can get a total map. Looks like they're expecting four to six inches with locally higher amounts closer to the lake. Um, that's that's pretty common. So nothing too crazy. Really not that um, you know not that impactful of a winter storm. Kind of nice actually if you're spending time with the family. Just have a nice little snowfall. Nothing too crazy. Not going to get stuck in the house or anything. So since we don't have a lot to talk about with what's going on right now, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the stuff that happened last month because a lot happened in December. We'll start with the um, what I would consider the most prolific tornado event in the last um, in the last few years for sure. Definitely for December, it's been a long time since we've had a big December outbreak. Some of you may remember December twenty sixth, twenty fifteen, in the uh, Dallas Fort Worth metro area had some big tornadoes the day after Christmas. Rowlett, Texas got hit by an EF4, did a lot of damage there. Um, that was uh, that was the last time we really had a big impactful December tornado event. Um, there, there have been a few others, but that was the last giant one that comes to memory. Um, so right now we're looking at the storm reports for December 10th, 2021. And you can see these lines. See how they're, you know, they're very linear. Um, in in the way that they start from one direction and go to the other, that just uh, that just shows that you had multiple supercells, multiple individual storms that just started southwest and then moved northeast and just kept going for hours and hours and hours. And this one right here that started in Arkansas is the uh, that's the tri or the quad state supercell. That's the one I was on. Let's go ahead and take a look at. Oh, I should have gotten the map with the damage on it that has the damage reports. Maybe I'll do another, maybe I'll do another video on that specific storm since it was so historic. Um, but we'll go ahead here and go to some of the, the reports that we can actually zoom in on. There's a map, now that they've done the damage surveys on all these tornadoes, there's a map that you can click on and it has their photos of the damage from the individual plots from where the tornado was, which is definitely interesting to see. Um, but the particular tornado I was on. Now, when you look at these maps, not all of these T's are an individual tornado. Um, they're just individual tornado reports, but they, they're the same tornado uh, sometimes. So we have tornado reports starting down here, um, just southwest of Jonesboro by about probably 30 miles. <coughs> Excuse me. Then the, uh, I, I believe this was one separate tornado down here, one or two separate tornadoes. And then the main tornado um, touched down here just southeast of Jonesboro just after dark, um, started moving northeast and did damage to a nursing home here in Monette that is in extreme northeast Arkansas. Went here, I, I actually traversed this portion of the damage path, so I'm pretty familiar with what happened. Um, Leechville got impacted on the northeast side. There were some homes that were damaged and then there was a big um, cotton factory and they had giant those giant rolls of cotton. They were blown apart and spread way out in the field for like a mile. It was crazy. It looked like it had just snowed in this one little spot. And then uh, there were also some there were some other businesses damaged on the northern side of town here. The tornado moved into uh, Missouri here. I remember right about here there was a bunch of high tension power lines, um, like five of them all just knocked down in a row and like crumpled, twisted around. It was crazy. Um, I believe H H Hornersville was spared for the most part. It went just to the south of town. Uh, there were some trees that were debarked south of here. In fact, I could even show you video of some of the stuff that I'm talking about. I have video of that. And then this is where I intercepted the tornado. And I'll show you guys video of, of the tornado that um, I intercepted as well. There is some on the channel, but um, I'll do maybe a more in-depth analysis of it here for you guys. This uh, is where I intercepted it. I was on Interstate 55 here south of Haiti. It's not Haiti. I pronounced it wrong the first time. And I was on State Highway J right here. So this, this road right here, State Highway J, is exactly where I intercepted it, right here. And the tornado moved from the southwest, and I could see it forever. It was very visible. There was a lot of lightning flashing, so I was able to watch it. I was able to make sure I was safe because I, was, I had my camera pointed, and I had to keep turning it to the right, so I knew that it was going to cross to my north if it had 
if I had to, had to keep my camera in one spot and it just kept getting wider and wider and wider, then I would have known it was coming at me. I would have had to move. But since it was moving that way, I knew I was fine. And I kind of paralleled with it along the highway until it crossed just south of Haytai here and then watched as it went across the uh, Mississippi River here. And the worst damage uh, out of all of this track that I just showed you, this first part of the track before it went into Tennessee and Kentucky and did its worst damage, um, which was actually a separate tornado, but um, the worst damage from this area was just to my west here in the town, just outside of the town of Braggadocia. This, this marker, this T right here is a little off. It actually was more just south of town here. Um, and there was a house, actually I believe two houses that were completely wiped clean um, off the foundation and blown off into the field. Some might say that's an F5 rating, but they don't know how things are structurally designed and they have to be anchored properly to be called an F5 people uh, or an EF5. People like to play structural engineer on Twitter and say everything's an EF5 and then they get mad when the professionals and the experts come in and then they don't rate it an EF5. Um, they know what they're doing. There were dozens of them out there scoping the entire damage path. I, I'd say they probably uh, did a just fine job rating that, but um, at, at least at least down here in Missouri, this was the worst damage here, just uh, south of Braggadocia. So I guess uh, I guess before we go into the December fifteenth, we can show a little bit of video. Um, let's go ahead and see if I can pull that up here. Let's do that. I'm gonna put it on mute, and we're just gonna talk about it. So this, um, this here is an opening shot um, from my most recent video. We'll just kind of play through it here. This is a drone shot of the um, nursing home in Monette that was damaged. You can see they've got a fire that was over there. I should have not let it fade out so quickly. Um, we can go to the raw shot too. There's a fire burning here with the debris and then this over here is the nursing home obviously damaged. Now this is really pretty cool. This is um, this is a drone shot and you can see the ground scarring from the tornado. You can see these spinning like motions. You have these little vortices. You've got the main tornado right and then you've got these vortices that dance around in the tornado. They're called uh, multiple vortices, <laughs> believe it or not. And um, you can see all these little tracks, all these little individual markings, and it's just really amazing to see that, especially from an aerial perspective. And that's the Mississippi River right there. Take a drink here. That is uh, Homersville. That's uh, a Dollar General that got destroyed on the northern side of town there next to that cotton factory I was telling you guys about. That's me driving for a, a dramatic shot, acting like I'm going chasing. There's a good radar loop of the storm here. This is where it's, uh, this is called the Missouri Boot Heel, Southern Missouri. That's where I intercepted it, and then it crosses and then goes into Kentucky and whatnot. <coughs> we'll skip ahead a bit here. Okay, there you can see it in the lightning flashes. This is where it's still off to my southwest by like, probably still like five to eight miles, I would guess. But it's moving pretty fast. It's moving like 45, 50 miles per hour. So it doesn't take long. Um, skip here a little bit. It gets a little thinner right here. It really changed shape a lot, which is kind of indicative of a, of a strong to violent tornado when it's constantly morphing. Um, gets a little bit more of what we would call a stovepipe shape here. And then you'll see later if you notice where it's at right now, it's a stovepipe like this. And then as it approaches Interstate 55, it turns into what we call a wedge, which is a tornado that's wider than it is tall. So, um, and I'll show you guys another cool thing here coming up. We'll skip ahead here. Okay, here now it's getting um, to the point where it's almost directly to my west. I'm no longer looking southwest. I'm looking more west um, and it's getting a little bigger, getting a lot closer, and it's approaching that town of Braggadocia that I was talking about. And that's unfortunately where the uh, death of the little girl occurred. A uh, nine-year-old girl, three sisters, one of them passed away. Um, thankfully, with the um, amount of views I was able to get on my videos from this, I was able to donate a decent amount of money to that family as well as a lot of other uh, charities in the area. 
Okay, so here's where something really crazy happens. Um, on the most violent of tornadoes, they get uh, what's called horizontal vortices. They're like little tendrils of vorticity that extend out from the tornado itself. It's not like a satellite tornado that revolves around the main tornado. This extends from the actual tornado itself horizontally, and um, that's just indicative of a, an extremely strong tornado. You'll see it pop up here in a sec. Here's my little warning on my video so people know to look for it. Watch here off on the right side of the screen. There it is. See that right there? That's the horizontal vortex. I'll let the video play again so you can see it naturally. <coughs> oh, oh, I didn't go back far enough, did I? Or did I go back too far? <sighs> Sorry. Okay, here it comes. Right there. I don't know if you can see it on the live stream, but you could literally see in the lightning flashes the motion of the tornado. That's how strong it was. You could see the motion. And these lights here, that's the that's the little community of Braggadocia. It's uh it's coming into town right now. And uh you can see you can see as it starts impacting those structures, which is actually kinda hard to watch now knowing what happened down there. Um but yeah, it, it goes into town or the outskirts of town at least and start sparking up. Let's go on to, okay, here's as it's, here's now I've gone back onto the Interstate 55 going north towards the town of Haytai and uh, the tornado is now about to cross right in front of me. I am probably about to wipe off my lens here. We don't need to watch that. Let's see if we can get a shot of the tornado off. There it is. You can kind of see it there. Probably another good shot coming right here, maybe. Yeah, you can kind of see it off there. And then anyways, it crosses the road and it impacted some semi drivers <clears throat> um, just right there in front of me. I went to go check on the first one. They were okay, they were on the periphery of the tornado. They just kind of slowly tipped over in the uh, rear flank downdraft winds. So the guy was a bit shooken up, but he was fine. And um, then I went a little further down, maybe another quarter mile, and there were semis that were mangled. They were in the center of the tornado, and that was very scary. One of them, uh, there was gas hissing, and the cab was all mangled up, and uh, I just didn't feel comfortable uh, us trying to assist with no real uh, skills of that sort for life-threatening injuries. So I just I just pulled off a little further up and called 911, and they were already well aware of what was going on, and they were already sending people down. So after they showed up, I, I decided to try and keep going east, um, but then I, I impacted some debris, so uh, <laughs> damaged the car a little bit. Let's just say uh, it's running, but there will be a 2022, uh, a new 2022 storm chasing vehicle um, arriving here in the next few days. Um, it's all part of it, though. So here I'm in the damage path. This is where I encountered those more... Um, damage semis <coughs> you can see there's kind of debris off in the field if you look closely um, let's go ahead and look at some of my raw video actually let's check back and make sure there's nothing interesting happening nope doesn't look like it even that storm to the north is a little weaker than it was let's see let's go ahead and see some of the raw video from like the drone and stuff because that was kind of interesting I think um, give me one moment here oh here's that cotton I was talking about it's a little out of focus da, 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 da. All right, here's the drone stuff. Let's see, let's do, let's do this one. So this is that nursing home in Monette. Uh, you can see, I'm not sure, I don't think there was anything on these foundations right here at the front of the screen. I think they were maybe building something because there's a lot of two by fours but no plywood or siding or shingles or anything like that. So looks like they were building stuff here um and thankfully nobody was in them likely but the nursing home got hit i think i think somebody might have passed away there unfortunately 
Um, and then you can see here, just clipped these houses on the outskirts of town, but look at how far the debris extends out into the field here. Do another shot coming back. You can see just whole whole wall of these these probably manufactured home right there. That's what it kind of looks like. Looks a little looks like there might have been a manufactured home right there with that long kind of plot right there. Maybe not. <coughs> and then there's that nursing home. Crazy stuff. This is the tornado was not even near its strongest right here. This was like EF2 damage, I think. EF2, maybe low end EF3. It obviously got much stronger as it went into Missouri there. And then the next tornado in Kentucky was significantly stronger. Not significantly, but significantly worse damage. Let's put it that way. A lot more uh, populated areas impacted. And you can see here the construction on this, it's, it's you know, you can see it's all cinder block. Kind of surprised these walls held up as good as they did. Let's go ahead and take a look at one more of those ground scarring videos because that's pretty crazy. So this is Interstate 55. This is where the semis were. You can actually see the black there is where one of them caught on fire. And you can see that tornado path going right off out there. There's the Mississippi River just down yonder. And you can see... Once again, those little vortices dancing around here. This is this is right where I pulled up on those semis. This was all probably really green, like over here before the tornado. You can just see this brown scar. Okay, we'll look at we'll look at. I don't know. Is there really much more to look at? Mm, no, I'd say that's pretty much it. You guys saw a lot of damage. We don't need to look at any more damage. It was all over the news. Thankfully, nothing too crazy going on right now. Let's check out this storm one more time. Yeah, it still has a tiny bit of rotation here. There was a storm like this yesterday in Georgia that ended up producing a tornado right at sunset. It was a tiny little storm like this. Um, but you can see the reds against the greens right there. There's the rotation. So there were tornadoes yes or a tornado yesterday um, in a storm similar to this. So you can't completely rule it out, even though it is small and weak. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. It can be about this. It could be about adjusting. It could be about anything related to what we usually cover here. I might not have the best answer if it's a property adjusting question. If James is still here, he could probably answer it. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at then the next big outbreak that happened, which was five days after the quad state supercell. This was a prolific wind event with a lot of uh, smaller tornadoes that started in uh, south, southern central Nebraska and then went up through Minnesota and into Wisconsin. In fact, the the tornadoes in Minnesota were the only recorded tornadoes in the state of Minnesota in the month of December ever. It's never happened, so that's pretty crazy. Um, there were also a lot of cool videos of this coming into Colorado. Uh, there was a big shelf cloud moving off the mountains down into the foothills, into the front range, and then it created a giant uh, dust cloud or haboob as it got into the eastern plains. A lot of dust up there, or dust out there, dry conditions, and it kicked up a giant dust cloud as it moved into western Kansas. And uh, I saw some videos from like Garden City, Kansas, Goodland, Kansas, of just complete blackout conditions from the dust. It's pretty crazy. And we'll go ahead and look at some of these reports here. Let's look at some of the more intense reports. Reports. <coughs> we had 84, 80 something mile per hour. Let's see if we can find a 93 mile per hour wind gust. Any crazy associated damages. 92 from a weather station. And these storms not only were producing <clears throat> 80 to 90 to 100 mile per hour winds, they were moving at 100 miles per hour. So they swept through really quickly. And then directly behind it was blizzard-like conditions almost immediately. Um, so 
not quite as prolific as the derecho that we had last, what was that, last August, um, but for December, pretty impressive to have back-to-back ginormous systems like this. I did not chase this. Um, I was still, actually, I was still stuck with my car issues in Arkansas, I believe, but I don't think there was a lot of, of, of crazy video from this day. There, most of the tornadoes were weaker. They were kind of more dusty spin-ups along the shelf cloud as it pushed on through. But still, I mean, 57 tornado reports in December this far north, not even in the southern states where you would you know, more expect at this time of year. Um, so that's, that's pretty interesting. I guess not a whole lot more to show on this one, but let's look at the moderate risk. That's crazy. You never see moderate risks in December that far north. I, that's probably a record too. I doubt that's ever happened. Um, but let's look at the future. Let's see what's going on. Oops. Let's see what's going on. <coughs> Excuse me. COVID-19, don't recommend it. I'm doing fine now, though. The first two days were really rough. And then ever since Thursday, it's kind of just felt like a cold. HT says... Hi, I've worked in Canada as an adjuster for three to four years. It's easy to get an insurance job in USA from Canada. Adjusters usually do not do estimates in Canada. I want to work and travel more. TFB Bruiser saw, dudes. Well, saw, dude. Um, so, I mean, is it easy to get an insurance job in... So are you talking about an independent insurance deal? Because that's totally different than getting a uh, staff job or it sounds like you might be a staff adjuster in Canada currently and you're looking to transfer to a, a, a portion in the US or are you looking to do the independent thing or what's going on with that HT uh, we'll go ahead and keep it wide here we'll get the 500 millibar map here 500 millibar is a measurement uh, that is about where planes are flying in the atmosphere. It goes um, 500 millibars, about where planes fly. Then it goes down to 700 millibars. You would think that's up, but it's not. Then it goes to 850 millibars, which is lower. That's about a uh, mile high but above sea level. Um, and then, then we have uh, 950 millibars and then surface. So 500 millibars up here. This this trough that you see here, this is what's responsible for the severe weather that's happening in the southeast. It's going to move on through and then looks like we kind of have kind of have zonal flow for a while. So that's good. It looks like we'll probably be free of severe weather for the next week. It doesn't look like there's going to be too much for the next week or so. Let's take a look at precipitation. Yeah, there's that there's that storm system you can see in the southeast it moves off and then yeah we don't really have a whole lot maybe some on that cold front that happens later next week but that won't be anything too severe I would imagine Tony says hello from Dallas yes twister sisters have no business that far north <laughs> yeah I know Dallas hasn't had that much action recently as far as uh, severe weather, tornadoes or anything. You had that storm back in April up in Denton. I mean, a few severe storms, but nothing too crazy. No big tornadoes recently, which is nice for you guys. I was just talking about earlier the uh, the uh, Rowlett tornado, if you guys remember that. December 26, 2015, day after Christmas, big EF4 went uh, through some of the eastern suburbs of Dallas. That was pretty insane. Uh, and there was actually, there was a uh, tornado that went through Dallas. Uh, what was it? It was sometime in October of 2019, an EF3. <coughs> yeah, knock on wood is right. Um, TFB Bruiser, I am in Norman, Oklahoma, which is just south of Oklahoma City. It is, uh, it's been lightly snowing all day long, flurries off and on, and then we should have we should have a quick burst of uh, a bit heavier snow later on today. I'll show you guys that. What's coming through a little later. 
We had rain all last night, heavy rain, which was great. And then you can see here, this next little round is going to be snow because it's like 19 degrees outside. So Norman is, here's Oklahoma City right here in the center. Norman's like right down here. So we should get maybe, maybe a little uh, quick accumulation. We got a bunch of Texas people in the comments. Texas adjusters, why well, imagine that? That's crazy. Let's see. Oh, we got tornado warning on that Columbus storm that we were just talking about. We were just talking about how a storm in Georgia did uh, produce a tornado with a similar structure, even though it's pretty small and pretty weak. You got that impressive velocity couplet there. So we do have a tornado warning. Looks like it's going to be moving just south of Artesia. Actually, probably is crossing this highway just south of Artesia, north of Brooksville. We'll be approaching the border here within the hour. Let's see what the route. We'll go ahead and read the warning here. At 5:29 Central Standard Time, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located over Otok, or eight miles east southeast of Starksville, moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. Uh, rotation indicated by radar. So nothing confirmed yet. If it was confirmed, actually, it would show up here on pink. Because I have my settings set that way. We'll go ahead here look at a few other products that we can deduce the health of the storm. We'll look here at something called Echo Tops that shows us how tall the storm is. And these oranges indicate that the storm is peaking at about 45,000 feet. Let's take it back a few frames. Oh, it won't load that. We'll look at the Ville, which is obviously not going to be too much because it's in the southeast and it's not that tall of a storm. And we'll look at storm relative velocity. Yeah, that's not a bad little couplet there. I wouldn't be surprised if that puts down a weak tornado. Thankfully, nothing too terribly strong. You can see here with the, with the mapping, not terribly populated out here. Few few little homes here and there, as you usually find in the southeast. But it's kind of splitting the difference between the towns, which is good. <coughs> it will be heading in the direction of Columbus, though. Columbus is a reasonably sized uh, city there in eastern Mississippi. So it will be... Probably heading maybe just on the south side of Columbus here over the next hour, 45 minutes. It's dark out there now, though, so anything would have to be illuminated by power flashes for anybody to see or report anything. <clears throat> Let's talk about the fire, because I'm from Colorado. I don't know if you guys saw some of the videos from that fire. 75, 80, 90, even 100 mile per hour winds whipping the fire and the smoke. It literally looked like a time lapse of how quickly the fire would approach these houses. I was actually in Colorado for um, the holiday, which is where I got my COVID-19. But I went and uh, rented a cabin with some of my buddies up here in uh, Estes Park. And we drove right past some of these structures that were burned here, Highway 36. Um, the fire started just west of here in the, uh, uh, just off the foothills on the front range. It's all flat out here. And, uh, apparently a power line fell down, caught a field on fire and it just rapidly spread right into this area of densely populated, uh, areas. <laughs> and it, uh, I think the last I heard it was over 600 homes were destroyed with, uh, numerous businesses, hotels, apartment complexes. That's a pretty big area. I mean, look at that compared to, uh, you know, the northern. This is the entire pretty much northern metro area, all the northern suburbs. That's a huge area, all things considered. James says he'll come make a day. We'll have a date in Oklahoma City. That would be f We're going to see each other in like two weeks, dude. We're going to NACA unless you decided to bail. NACA is, when does NACA start? The 24th? I'll probably get there the 23rd. Vegas. Hopefully see some of you guys out there. We'll be there all week pretty much. I'll probably be driving back. I'll be driving the new ride. Bet you can't wait to see that. 
<clears throat> All right, gang. Well, we'll watch this. We'll, we'll maybe chat a little longer while this tornado warned storm goes on. We'll see if I can hear. I'm going to check Twitter real quick and see. In fact, I'm actually going to look and see if I know anybody that's on that storm. <coughs> Spotter locations. Nope. Let's see. No, no, no. None of none of the people I know are on that storm. They're all probably further north. I'll check Twitter and see if I can see any reports of a tornado. They're southwest of Columbus, Mississippi. So those northern storms that I was talking about earlier that are on the cold front up here in uh, southern Tennessee, here's a nice shot from my friend Stas. Um, lots of rolling hills out there. You got to have a drone if you want to chase out there successfully. There's a nice uh, HP supercell there. You can see the tornado would probably be somewhere right in here if there were to be one. Probably some gnarly wind and rain up there. See what else there is to see. <coughs> Let's see. Rotating wall cloud. Not seeing much. I'll show you guys a picture that I posted of my year in recap. Saw a lot of tornadoes this year. Actually, I can show you the full res version because I am the one who edited it. Imagine that. Uh, da, da, da. I'm sorry. Can't see around the camera that's set up. Where did I save that to? We're get Oh, there it is. We're getting to the point where I'm just rambling, so we'll end this here in a little bit. Here's my 2021 year in review. This picture on the right is one of the best supercells I've ever seen. It was in Montana. Matt actually was supposed to come out chasing or at least was entertaining the thought, but then he ended up having to go do some work, whatever. This was like about three hours from where he lives. Montana's huge, so it takes a while to get from one side to the other. The east side of Montana is pretty flat and open. This was this was pretty close. This was east of Great Falls by a little bit, so this is right kind of on the edge of the mountains and the uh, and the plains. Um, but this first tornado here that I saw was in January, so we started the year off with a weak tornado in northeast Oklahoma near January. These two tornadoes right here were in Texas, western Texas. This one was just north of Lubbock, a little rope. And then the day after that, this giant wedge south of Amarillo crossed Interstate 27 near Happy. Then this next photo is of a tornado, a different tornado, but from the same storm that produced this one. This crossed over the Palo Duro Canyon, which was pretty crazy to see a tornado go over in the canyon. And you can maybe see it's hurling some debris right there. That was a, uh, that was a camper. And I uh, don't want to be in one of those during a tornado. This was about a week later. Uh, this was, uh, once again, in central Texas. This was just uh, west of Waco by maybe like 30, 40 miles. I can't remember the town this was near. Very brief tornado. It only touched down for like 30 seconds. Didn't do any damage. And then we all-nighted it from central Texas to uh, uh, Alabama and saw this massive tornado near Greensboro. Um, just about oh, a little bit southwest of Tuscaloosa there. I'm not sure how many miles. I don't remember. Then it was a while before I saw another tornado. This was Sterling City, Texas. In uh, Let's see. This was May 17th, 2021. Um, this was a tornado in northeast Colorado. Really weak, brief, no damage. This was a tornado in uh, near Hayes, Kansas. Another tornado that did no damage. This was, again, in the panhandle of Texas. Uh, this was my first North Dakota tornado. It was near Williston, south of Williston. And it was a really nice truncated cone. Beautiful supercell above it, moving like two miles per hour. And uh, cool storm there. <laughs> this one was in... <coughs> this one was in Oklahoma in the... Uh, 
foothills there, the, um, what do you call those? The Wichita Mountains. And it went over these power, these uh, wind turbines and knocked off some of the blades. And then here are two screenshots from that quad state storm. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty active year. Saw a lot of tornadoes. I think 28 in total. That was my final count. So pretty good year. So we'll see what's going on. Oops, I screwed up by trying to drag that image and it stopped pulling. Yep, so we just have that. Oh, we do actually have another tornado warned storm. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. I'm trying to log off here and then stuff starts happening. And I should see if there's any other questions. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Yeah, James, I remember James caught a land spout. We were out doing claims. We were doing um, two drive-ins uh, for hail for vehicles in Midland and Odessa. And James was in Midland and I was in Odessa at Lanny's Body Shop. James, we should go see what Lanny's up to. <laughs> um, but yeah, James called me up and he's like, yo, there's a land spout, which is a, it's a weaker tornado. Um, it's formed by a storm that's not rotating. Uh, it's, it's a process more aligned with how a dust devil is formed, but it just it essentially gets entrained in the updraft. So it gets stretched and strengthened and uh, basically reaches all the way up and can produce up to EF2, EF3 damage in some instances. So up here along the cold front, maybe just east, southeast of the cold front, we do have a storm here that is just gone tornado warned. Not the tightest of circulations, but you can see that kind of classic shape. You can see that hook trying to form. It's trying to really wrap around. It's kind of what we would call a dog leg type hook where it's starting to develop, but hasn't really wrapped around. It's more just like a dog leg dog leg of a fender or a quarter panel <laughs> but uh, that could definitely be a problem later on you do lose the daytime heating as the Sun goes down but since you're so close to the Gulf in the uh, you know southeastern states you do get that continual pumping of the warm moist air and as it gets dark the uh, the wind profiles generally will uh, start to improve they'll favor more tornadic storms as long as they can stay discreet part of that is just because of the lack of friction as the sun goes down you have less friction so those winds are able to ramp up by a few miles per hour which can make a big difference even this storm here well doesn't have the best velocities but it's very close to the radar but it does have that little hook appendage at the bottom when it's so close to the radar you don't get the best returns this one down here it's still got a good little couplet it's so small I wish we could see a photo of that. Yeah. No reports, no reports. Checking my phone to see if anybody's reported anything. Doesn't look like it. Does not look like it. We'll stay live here for... Dang, we've been going for 48 minutes. That's pretty good. I could talk people's ear off about weather. I guess we could talk about some of my plans for 2021. First off, we got the new vehicle arriving, so that'll be interesting to, uh, I love doing um, little projects and it's been a while since I've had um, a car that I could rig up a little bit. When I was younger, I used to, um, I used to put all sorts of stuff on my vehicles. The first chase car I ever had was a 97 Ford Explorer. And the first thing I did was I, I wanted hail guards. I wanted to be able to go and just put myself in baseball size hail and not worry about my windows blowing out. So I, I designed these uh, little cages, if you will. I, I made PVC pipe frames and then put um, shelving wire over them and then directly bolted them. Just took a drill and directly bolted them right into the, uh, right into the body on the quarter panel, the rear door, the passenger door on all sides. And um, yeah, just made sure there was a little gap between the window and the grating so that if it flexed, if a giant hailstone hit, obviously the metal's gonna flex some. I didn't want it to go down into the windshield and still break it or into the side windows and still break it. Um, so I did that. That car got totaled because uh, I was coming home from a storm and um, 
<coughs> I had seen tornadoes in southeast Colorado, and on the back side of the storm was a blizzard, and I was driving home. I was like two miles from my apartment, and I could barely see the road. There was no delineation. It hadn't been plowed, and I felt my right two wheels go to do So I'm like, oh, man, I'm off the road. And I tried correcting, and I overcorrected, and the vehicle just slowly spun. I was like, no. And there was another car coming, maybe 30 miles per hour, going pretty slow, and just hit me and hockey pucked. I went down into a ditch. Thankfully, I didn't roll because it was so slippery. I just slid down, but it was really steep. And I was still wearing shorts and flip-flops from my storm chase. So I had to get out and climb up this hill to, you know, when the cops and everything finally showed up in shorts and flip-flops and like seven, eight inches of snow. And the most thing I was most concerned about, people are yelling down, are you okay? I was like, I can't find my SD card. All I cared about was my SD card because that had all my tornado footage from the day. And that's all I cared about. <laughs> not my not my personal safety, my personal well-being. Who cares about that? And then, so yeah, anyways, uh, <laughs> that was a tangent. I like uh, I like making uh, you know modifications to my vehicles. I'm not going to do that on my brand new vehicle, but I am going to have some cool modifications on the inside. So I've got a really nice power inverter, which will also be useful if I use that car for adjusting. Um, I'll probably have a roof rack so I can carry gas canisters when we go down to uh, uh, do hurricanes on the Gulf. Speaking of hurricanes, a goal for 2022 is definitely to do a hurricane abroad. Um, two times in 2021, I was this close to buying a ticket. The first one was to uh, Cancun. I almost bought a ticket to Cancun um, for a hurricane in August, but it ended up being Category 1, and I didn't want to fly down for Category 1. And then I did buy a ticket to Mazatlan in October for what was supposed to be a Category 3, but it ended up, um, it ended up weakening. Actually, it never really strengthened. That's what it did. It just never strengthened. So I canceled that ticket. I, uh, I uh, thankfully bought the insurance for that and then ended up chasing tornadoes instead. So a goal is to definitely do a hurricane abroad. It's going to be hard to do anything other than um, Mexico or maybe something like Puerto Rico, um, some, something in those island chains. It's going to be hard to do anything other than that for the foreseeable future with COVID restrictions. But to eventually get out to the Philippines, Japan. Oh man, there's so many things I want to do. I'm, uh, I've got a weird, weird fascination with weather, guys. There's so many places I want to go. I'd love to live in Italy or Greece because they get a bunch of water spouts out there on the Adriatic Sea. That would be incredible. Oh man, any other questions? James asked what I'm getting. You'll see at NACA 2021 or 2022. Be there. Well, guys, I'm not sure how much longer I can talk. We'll, we'll, we'll give it till six. How about that? A one hour stream. I think Matt will be happy with that. <coughs> James, how are you feeling? James and I both have COVID. Everybody got COVID this, this Christmas, I feel like. The Omicron variant just spread its way through. And hopefully this will be the last wave. I'm going to go get another sip of water real quick. I'll be right back. There, uh, there actually is some snow starting to accumulate outside, and the that main, uh, that main swath of snow that's going to come in later hasn't even arrived yet. So that's kind of cool. We might actually end up getting a uh, uh, maybe an inch. That'd be that'd be sweet. Start off the year with an inch of snow. I think that happened last year actually in Oklahoma. We got like a couple inches of snow the very first day of 2021. Um, but yeah, COVID. <coughs> it's awesome. My first two days were really bad. Um, I got back from Colorado on Monday night. Uh, this is this last week. 
I got home from Colorado Monday night, found out that somebody that I was at Christmas with tested positive. And um, literally the next morning, I had some body aches and I thought, oh, well, I just did a nine hour drive and maybe I slept weird. And then they just got worse and worse throughout the day. And I was like, "Uh oh, that's not good. I got home. I finished up doing my work. um, And uh, man, I started getting the chills. I put on a sweater. It's like, okay, I'm going to go to bed, take some NyQuil, woke up, complete sweat, hotter than hell, <laughs> took everything off, woke up again with chills, started getting nauseous, it was horrible, my body's just got, just my body aches just got worse and worse and worse, and then um, woke up the next morning, could barely move, went, uh, went to the couch because I'd sweat so much, I'd sweat in my bed, it was gross. And just laid there all day long, just could barely even drink anything. I was so nauseous. I just had to sip. And uh, yeah, it was just like that all day long. And then had the cough and headache and everything. Um, James, see, I'd never lost my taste. I, I thought that was interesting. I, I never lost the taste. But I did, I did test positive. I'm glad I didn't lose my taste or smell because that would really suck. So we still have this storm tornado warned. It's looking a little less organized and it's about to be impacted by some of these um, little clustery things down here. It's still got a decent couplet there. Even this one's got a little rotation down there. It's way more broad than this one. This one's way more concise. And then this one here, this one might be a problem in a little while. We've got these two kind of storms here and then we've got these two up here this tornado warning quickly went away they issued that and dropped it like immediately yeah it's just both of these have what i was talking about earlier that dog leg hook it's kind of like it's like a 90 degree it doesn't have that last little loop around the, the end where it really curves around the end it's more 90 degrees those usually don't produce tornadoes until they're able to wrap that around. James is throwing all the COVID facts here. I heard the, the night sweats too are a part of the Omicron one, the severe night sweats. That's at least what my dad was saying. I'm so glad I didn't lose my taste. Well guys, I think that might do it. I don't think there's a whole lot more to talk about. There's definitely still going to be a tornado threat here throughout the next few hours, but I'd say um, probably probably not going to be anything too uh, significant. We'll knock on wood for sure, but we don't need uh, we don't need anything else. So this has been an Adjuster TV live weather update. We did cover some of the severe storms in the southeast, and we also talked about what happened in December. Um, if you guys have any requests for any future content, feel free to uh, send us a message on Facebook, LinkedIn, anywhere. Um, this whole live stream was sponsored by Kaplik Insurance for Insurance Adjusters. Go to cplic.net to find out more. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and uh, we'll do some more of these. Maybe if I'm not out chasing, when I'm out chasing, uh, you know, we're doing those live reports from the from the ground. But when I can't be out, it's fun to do these little live pop-ins maybe next time it'll be something a little bit more um, exciting that we can really dive in on tell you exactly what's going on show you what uh, tornadic supercell looks like on radar as it's uh, ongoing but um, anyways guys peace out stay safe and uh, hope to see some of you at NACA uh, James I'm assuming you said you had a, a negative test you're still going to be there so we'll all be there we always have a great time lots of cool people um, Lots of great exhibits, lots of great chances to get work. I got work from uh, some of the people that I talked to, some of the companies that I talked to uh, last year at NACA. Great relationships with some of them, just a lot of fun. So hope to see you guys there.